I'm going to turn this into this in 27 minutes or less. Will I finish in time? Or will I have to hit the turbo button? You can create along with me or just relax and watch. I'm Gina Murrow, the 27 minute artist. Today we're going to paint Groot, the golden retriever. He's an energetic fellow who belongs to my friend Pam. He's also an award-winning agility dog. We'll sketch Groot on paper, starting with his nose and moving out from there, using colored pencils at the end to bring this friendly dog to life. Here are your supplies. Drawing paper. I used Bristol paper. A mechanical pencil with an 07 lead or a hard regular pencil. Pencil sharpener an X-Acto knife or pocket knife, kneaded eraser, and colored pencils in these colors. Okay, I am not Groot, but we're gonna paint him. Let's go. <laughs> to get started on this picture of Groot, let's use a mechanical pencil. This happens to be a 0.7. I like it because it, it's a very light look. You won't really see it and it erases easily. I'm drawing this on just a, off a drawing pad of paper. Groot has a very prominent nose. We're gonna start with that. And if we can get it in to the right side, we'll like it. Now, rather than just drawing his nostrils, we're gonna do just a little bit of uh, shading to get that shape. It looks more like a nose more quickly, less like a cartoon drawing. Okay, now one thing that makes Groot look like Groot, he's at an awkward angle here. So we need to make sure these eyes get in just the right spot. And they're not as, I know he has a long nose, but because of the angle of the camera, I need to make sure I get that in at the right angle. If you're not careful, you will make your dog look like a human with the eyes. Just kind of mark where those shadings are going to be. Now this eye is at the same angle as that piece, but a little bit off to the right. And his eyes are not overly large. When you draw eyes, if you draw them in straight lines to make the circle, you'll get a much stronger drawing. Feel like, feel like we just need to adjust his nose just a little. You can take a kneaded eraser and just very easily pull back on some of the stuff that isn't going quite where it's supposed to. Okay. And I'm looking just for the shadow shapes. Just think of the shapes. Don't think about drawing a nose or an eye. You're just trying to get those shapes in there. Just very lightly. He definitely has some interesting raised eyebrows there. He's wondering what we're doing. His human Pam was standing just behind me there and that's why he's looking over that direction where's she going okay part of the problem is I don't have his nose tilted the right way so let's tilt his nose yeah that's better Now, this part of his muzzle is much lighter, especially with the lighting. And I have to line it up correctly. So I want it to be below this line right here. I don't want it to go any farther out than that. I 
And then this part of his muzzle is at an angle. So we kind of see the underside. So we want to make sure we draw that. Keeping my lines light and easy because I keep having to move them. So the shadow shape coming here gets wider around the eye and narrower. So rather than just drawing a line, I'm actually doing the shadow shape so I can get that ear in. And just before you get to the end of the muzzle, that dark triangular shape changes. Golden Retrievers have just amazing curvatures to their fur. There's a lot of dogs that have wonderful soft ears and Goldens are one of them. And Groot was young in this picture, so he was especially soft and fuzzy. So once we get where his ear is, We can switch over and use the pen, which you'll be able to see easier. This long hair of a golden too, you just want to kind of suggest it. You don't have to draw every strand. Kind of figure out which direction that's going. I wish I had their hair. Could you imagine me with golden retriever hair? Okay, let's switch to a pen. And this one, I'm going to use a Tombow version of these pens made for lettering. And it's in Japanese, and I don't even want to try to pronounce the word. But I'll put it in the notes below. Now, this eye I have too far to the left. I can see that right now. It doesn't line up properly with the nose. So let's quickly go back to the pen. The inside of his, see I had it about a quarter of an inch off. And remember, a dog's eyes are a little more towards the front of, than some animals, but they are still more to the side. They're not human looking. And much as we tend to think they are sometimes. Okay, go away little fly. We'll put that rectangular spotlight in. That is closer. Okay, so I'd adjust it with my pencil so that I can use my kneaded eraser if I need to. Now we go to our pen. And again, still keeping my sketching light and airy. This lets me, if I put a wrong mark in, um, I can still kind of correct around it. You can't erase pen, right? You can't erase it. I guess you could use white out. But mostly you would just work with it. You would just leave it in there. Making it, making it work with you. Got this eye a little bit big. Okay, let's color it in. On, some people leave the eyes to the end. They're the funnest part to do. Uh, for a quick sketch like this, I like to go ahead and put the eyes in. It gives me a feeling of, uh, of knowing where the animal is. And like, see the way I did that, I kind of missed up on leaving some white space. So it's gonna look like he's looking at me instead of over my shoulder, like he is in the, in the reference. Not a big hairy deal. Still, we're gonna make it look like Groot, so. Get those questionable um, shadows in that make it look like he's saying hello. Do you speaking to me? So when I first drew these, it looked like a dog, but it didn't look like Groot. And what you have to do is you have to find the distances between the eyes, the nose, these sorts of things that help identify it as that specific animal. Now, if you're just doing a drawing of a, a wolf, and it's not a particular wolf, it doesn't have a name, then it doesn't matter as much. 
but when you're drawing someone's pet you want to get it more specifically that animal and so that's what we're trying to do here it's got a little bit of a shadow triangular shape shadow there just a little and let's get part of his ear Now we're going to use the shadows again instead of straight lines to mark where his jowls go and where his ear comes down. This is a very almost a serpentine shadow. So this is the part that can actually be kind of calming, zen-like. And don't panic if the first few times you do it, you can't, can't get it looking like that specific animal. Just keep trying. Try again. Do it again. I frequently draw animals repeatedly until I get them looking like themselves. I'm going to shorten this one just a little bit. So he looks more like Groot. This is really good practice for seeing the shapes of things. Rather than drawing what I know, I'm drawing the shape. And what that does, especially when you're looking at a picture, is it helps you figure out the techniques for showing the shape. It's always a balance between drawing what we know we're looking at and what we're actually seeing. And sometimes when you're using photographs, you actually have to change it a little. I drew a beautiful fox one time, but in the photo, which was taken from a wildlife cam, um, the fox had a leg that was hidden from sight. When I painted it without that third or fourth leg, she looked crippled. It was a problem. So you sometimes have to kind of alter it to work with what's going on. Now, when I get to the curly hair, especially the lighter hair, hint at it, just give a few hints. We'll fix it up with some colors here. And she's got some, he's got some nice shadow shapes here. And then he's got these lovely luscious curls, but underneath there is a nice dark shape that we want to make sure we get. And we want it to match this one. I make my strokes match the direction of the hair. Causes movement, makes it look more, more like the dog itself. And I'm not putting in every shadow. I'm, I'm picking the ones that are darkest. Or if it changes position if the hair has changed position, should clarify that. Okay. This shadow is key. And I think I'm going to save those other shadows for doing with the Pen colored pencils. I'm going to suggest we use colored pencils for adding some color to this partly because they're fun and they're easy to have around. We often have them. They we don't have to worry about eating and doing colored pencils because we're not going to poison ourselves with them. You can keep them around kids or grandkids. They're just handy to have. Now he's got a shadow here. Good enough. Don't overdo it. You don't need to do everything with the pen. We'll put the pen down. We might come back to it. I'm going to take my rubber, my kneaded eraser, and just lightly mark out some of the more prominent pencil lines before I put color on him. Don't have to get every one of them out. But a kneaded eraser needs to be cleaned by kneading it. That's its name. You can shape it into any kind of shape you need to for making erasing marks. You can make it narrow and just take out a point. You can make it big and flat. 
a lot of different things you can do with it. And don't, you don't have to press hard. You just kind of give it a light rub. Yeah. And I do this before I put the colored pencil on because I don't want to lift up any of the color. Okay. Now we're going to start with actually in the middle. We're going to do a middle one with this deep, it's called goldenrod. Sorry, couldn't read the tiny print. It's called goldenrod. I'm using Prismacolors because they have a wax base and they blend beautifully. So I'm just lightly putting this in the darker areas, not the very darkest necessarily, but some of the light, the golden areas. And I don't worry about staying within the lines. This part is what I'm going to use to add deeper golden color, not around, not on his white muzzle. This is the, this is the part that kind of almost leans towards brown, but not quite. And I'm just adding a touch of color. I don't have to color every square inch. If I feel like my pencil is getting dull, you can use a hand uh, sharpener. Be very gentle. Or if you still can't get it sharp enough or not deep enough, you can use an X-Acto knife. Just very carefully shave it down till you get it to where you want. See it nice in there. Now, if do not put these in an electric sharpener because it will eat them alive. Just a little bit of golden on his nose. And golden right there. Now I'm trying not to go outside of the lines, but I'm also being loose with my with my colors. Okay, before I leave his face, I wanna go back up and show you what I'm gonna do with some of this color. I'm gonna lightly go across his forehead with this deeper color, but very lightly. Okay. Leaving a lot of white there. Now I'm gonna to go to the brown. This is Sienna Brown in this particular set. And I'm going to fill in these shadows, cross hatching, just as like I was doing it with pencil, doing it light and building up my color with a darker hand by going back over it. And I can look at my reference picture and kind of see where things are looking a little darker and put that in. And if it's getting too spotty looking, too patchwork looking, I can just lightly go over it with a brown. Towards the bottom down here where there's shadows, I want that brown to get a little deeper. You don't have to go all the way through with one color. You could finish an ear if you prefer. Do that one whole section. But what I caution you against is the colors will change as you get others next to them. So you'll want to kind of keep an eye on that and make sure you're getting, uh, you're touching up when you, need, when you need it to. Now these shadows don't really look brown to me. They actually look a little on the purplish side. So I'm gonna take a deep purple. This is actually called a violet. And just right here where there was a little black mixed in with the brown, I'm gonna put in just a little bit deeper color and it's gonna be purple. It won't read purple. When you step back, it'll just be a deeper, cooler version of what's around his eye. And this part right here by his ear has a lot of that. Let's get some darker colors in. I love to add wild colors to any painting or coloring that I'm doing. It's fun, it adds interest. You don't even realize that it's more interesting. Darker right there. I could do dark gray through here, but I think the purple is more interesting. Okay. 
this is going to be kind of a black. We'll come back in there and get that. But again, adding the color for interest. When we get done, it won't really look like purple. It'll just have cooled down. I see it's definitely cooler on this side of his head. Now this picture was, this is a reference picture I took. I was indoors, fluorescent light, not great lighting. So you kind of have to play around with it. Let's take our black and let's, let's get some of this nose. His nose is so predominant. We want to make sure we get it prominent. <laughs> Perfect. So this part, his nostrils are very distinctive. Make sure I get the shape as close to what I'm seeing as I can. But I also see that it's with a kind of a darkish red. So we're going to put in a touch of this black, but we're going to come back with a, a rosier color. I'm using a circular motion now just to kind of add some difference. Now I'm going back and forth across his muzzle, lightly adding into that. And right here, I'm going to make it good and dark because he has a lip there. But it's not a, it's not a real solid line. It's kind of hinted at. There's, there's some shadows down in here that I could lightly do with this black. That kind of adds to it. Not too far because you want this part to still shine, to catch the light, to be a little golden. Let's come back to, well, let's start with this really light peachy color. It is called peach because his nose, we want to get that in properly and using a circular motion to kind of blend it. I'm going to do the top part of his nose and down on the sides. Okay. And right there around his nostril. Now I'm going to take this darker color. This one is called Tuscan red and just very lightly on the side of his nostril. I'm going to blend that Tuscan red in to deepen the peach color. Ah. That's why you use these wax paper, uh, wax colored pencils. Now, if you've bought a cheaper set, you can still do this. It won't blend quite as well, but for the most part, nobody can tell. It has more to do with pressure. And there is a little bit of pink down in here. So I'm going to go right over that black with this darker red and hope that the pink comes out. And it does. But keeping the darker color down low. Not at the top. Okay, there. It's got that nice rosy muzzle. Let's keep going. Uh, let's add in some lighter color. So I take my lightest yellow. This is called canary yellow. I don't want to use this too much and I want to use it lightly. Brushing more or less in the direction of his hair on each side. This is just as the yellow that kind of picks up the light and gets a little bit cooled off by the, by the fluorescence. Fluorescence is a cool light, kind of a daylight. And so it has a cool bluish tone to it, which I can see in this reference picture and I can use to my advantage if I do it very lightly through this lighter part of his muzzle. Now the canary yellow has just a faint touch of lemon yellow would be a good color if that's what was in your set. And looks like there's a little bit right here hitting off his shoulder and a little bit there. Okay, we'll come back to that. Go back to the middle yellow that, I, that you've got. And you can kind of, in swirling tones, just blend in some of those between the brown and the canary. You don't have to do it everywhere. What you're trying to do is just make it be a little softer so it looks less like it's colored and more like it's just naturally this color. So I don't want to put this where it's lighter. I'm just using this to blend in between the brown and the canary. Longer strokes on his ears is those gorgeous ears. Okay, you getting the idea? We only have three minutes, so let's 
get in a little more color real quick. Again, longer, fun strokes down here. And you don't have to do every spot. You're just kind of reminding people, oh yeah, he's a golden. Grab your brown, your, the warmest brown you've got. And let's, using, using the same more, uh, direction of the hair. Yeah, okay. That's actually one I didn't quite get the color on. And I think it has, it needs to be cooled off just a little. So I'm gonna take a violet and cool off some of those colors. Just a little. Especially in here. It was more, more whitish hair, but it didn't have, uh, it's, it's cooler. It doesn't have the brown. It's got more of a purple. There we go. Now, we've got two minutes left. Let's see what we might want to touch up. Let's add a little purple in there, darken that. Um, Let's warm up this shadow here with brown. And I think this actually needs some warmth to help his muzzles stand out. We still have enough time. Here's Groot. Now I'm gonna go over the black with a warm brown, nice and hard. These Prismacolors, the wax base kind of Stands, sticks out so up close at least in real life I can actually see a bit of brown and he's got a little bit of darkness around his eye yep look at the shapes of your shadows look at the shapes paint the shapes not the shadow there Groot I present to you Groot, with 54 seconds to go. So you could do more if you wanted, but I wouldn't worry about it. I did see, I got a little carried away at the brown. I can lighten it with the needed eraser. It doesn't really erase. Not a big problem. We'll just call that one of his loose hairs. Okay, thanks for joining me. Remember, if you're doing a pet of your own, look for the distance between the eyes, the nose, the shape of the ears. It'll give you the clues. Would you like to see a preview of our next episode? Keep watching. It's coming in just 40 seconds. But first, here are a few things you can do to help me keep the videos coming. Hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment while you're there. Share this video on your social media or share it with a friend. You can go to my website where you'll find more painting tips and you can buy the paintings I've created in these episodes. You can also see my fine art originals that took me way more than 27 minutes to create. Book me as a guest artist for your next gathering or convention. I do live painting demos and paint alongs for groups of every size, either in person or via Zoom. Next time on 27 Minute Artist, my home state of Alaska is filled with natural beauty, even by the side of the road. We'll capture Reflections Lake in pen and colored pencils. See you next time.